Hey, seventh graders, you have a mid-chapter quiz today on page 506, where we're going back to all the problems we've done so far this chapter. So here's what I'm going to recommend. I'm gonna, I put this quick video together with uh, examples of just about every problem that you'll face today. Uh, just like we did when we last took a test, I'm going to show you examples of each type of problem. I would encourage you to watch the examples, pause the video, do the ones in your work that are really similar, and then unpause the video and watch the next problem. Just keep going through your whole assignment like that. I'm going to let you know in this video, I'm going to actually do numbers 7, 13, and 29 with you because I thought those were a little bit tricky uh, to talk you through each of those three. So 7, 13, and 29, when those problems come up, we'll do the actual real ones. Otherwise, these are examples that are very similar. So here's number one. They want you to write these expressions using exponents. So this would be 5 f to the third, right? Or this next one would be x plus 5 to the third power because there's three of them. Now notice numbers 3 to 5, they want you to evaluate. Okay, so evaluate, remember, is a fancy word for solve. So they do actually want you to solve these. Okay, so notice this is 25, right? 3, that's the second power, careful, isn't 6. That's 3 times 3, which is 9, right? And then 2 to the third power, careful, isn't 6 either. That's 2 times 2 times 2. So careful with those powers. That's 8. So you have 25 times 9 times 8. You may use a calculator if you show your work like I did. Show those first couple steps. That gives us 1,800. So careful on those, all right? And when you're evaluating, we have to substitute something in. Remember to put it in in parentheses. 3, negative 2, plus 2 squared. And then we got to follow PEMDAS. So parentheses always come first, right? So we have negative 2 plus 2. So the opposite number, so we subtract and use the sign of the bigger number. So in other words, 2 minus 2 is 0. This becomes 0. 0 to the second power is just 0 times 0. So 0 and then 3 times 0, right? We have this number sitting outside that we have to multiply. So we end up with just 0 on this one. That's a little bit of an odd one. But that's how you would substitute in and solve those ones. Okay, number seven is kind of an odd one. It just says, the number of acres consumed by a forest fire triples every two hours. So here's the number of hours, here's the number of acres that are burned up in a forest fire, okay? And then it says, what of the following represents the number of acres consumed after one day? Well, you have to think, well, how many hours is one day? 24 hours, right? 24 hours is one day. So you have to go across. Notice what's happening. The hours consumed... The power is just going up one each time. And notice the hours goes up two each time. So this next one would have been 12, 3 to the 6th, right? 14, 3 to the 7th, 16, 3 to the 8th. I want you to keep going until you get to 24. Remember to count by twos. So you'll have to go a few more. And then every time you go up two on the top, go up one on the bottom, 3 to the 9th, 3 to the 10th, and so on. When you get to 24, what's your number to the power? What's 3 to the what power? Grab the answer on number 7 that matches what you've got. So that's what I would do for, for to solve number 7. I'll let you take it from there. For 11, you need to write the prime factorization of each number. In other words, make a factor tree. Don't forget to put your numbers in order then when you're all done, okay? So like here would be one example. 3 times uh, 35 is what? 7 and 5. And that's all the farther we can go. So I put my numbers in order. Don't forget to do that. 24 it takes a few more numbers. Remember, to circle any prime numbers. When we did these earlier in the chapter, we had some people circling some numbers that weren't prime, okay? So notice this one is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Another way to write that same answer would be 2 to the third power times 3. That would also be acceptable. So you can write your answers anyway, either like this or like this. Your choice. Number 13 was a little bit of an odd one, too. They're saying you've got this kitchen, okay? And this kitchen is 20 feet long by 12 feet wide. Whenever people say lengths and widths, they always put the length first, okay? And they're saying they've got these different tiles. They've got tiles, letter F, that are 2 feet by 2 feet. They've got tiles, letter G, that are 2 feet by 3 feet. They've got tiles, letter H, that are 2 feet by 5 feet. And they've got tiles, letter J, that are 3 feet by 3 feet. I almost put J by J instead of 3 by 3. There we go. Okay, and they're saying which tiles will not work? Remember, it goes length, width. Length, width, length, width, length, width, right? And so we have to ask ourselves for like F, can I have tiles that are 2? Will, will they fit perfectly? Yeah, because 2 is a, a multiple of 20, right? Or a factor of 20, excuse me. And then height, or the width, can 2 work? Yeah, because the width of this tr of this rectangle has is 12, right? I can put 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and eventually end up with 12, right? 
Right. How about g? Does g work? Can it have a length of 2? Well, yeah, because the length is 20 here, right? And 2 times 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 can eventually equal 20. And my width of this, this type of tile is 3. Can 3s eventually equal 12 to give us our width over here? Yeah, 3, 6, 9, 12, right? So that works. So we could have tiles that are 2 feet by 3 feet. Does letter h work? Can we have tiles that are 2 feet by 5 feet? Okay. Um, 2 feet... Yeah, that would work because we could put the two feet going um, this way, right, on the on the width. You can change the tiles around, and the five feet side of the of the tile could go on this side because five plus five plus five plus five is twenty. So that would work. Does J work though? Could we have tiles that are three feet long by three feet wide? We could definitely have triangles that are three feet w or tiles that are three feet wide, but long. No, there's nothing. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three will never get us to twenty, right? So this is the tile letter J that does not work. It wouldn't fit. You'd have to cut the tiles to make it fit, and they don't want to do that. All the other tiles would fit because their numbers, their sides, are factors of 12 and 20, right? J uh, has one side that's not a factor of 20, so it wouldn't work. So that was a little bit of a strange one, so I wanted to talk you through that one. So letter J for number 13. Number 15, they want you to factor the monomials. Remember when you do this, um, you do a factor tree of the whole number. So like this one, 16 is 4 times 4, 2 times 2. So we get this, right? So I get 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, however you want to write that, and then times a times a, right? Okay, and then no, remember when you have a negative number, so do a factor tree of just the positive number first, and then remember you have to add a negative 1. So this one would be negative 1 times 2 times 5 times x times x times x times x, four x's, right? And there we go. Now remember when you're multiplying numbers that have the same base, you add the powers, right? And when you're dividing numbers that have the same base, the same big number, you subtract the powers, and then the base stays the same. So notice this one would become seven, and then I'd add the powers because we're multiplying, right? So seven to the seventh power. Notice this one I'm dividing, so I should, should keep the same base and subtract the powers, right? And then when you have ones like this, where you're multiplying whole numbers that have variables, remember you multiply the whole numbers first, so 4 times 3 is 12. And then notice we've got two n bases, and we're multiplying, so we should add the bases. And there we go. Numbers 23 and 25, they want you to write it using a positive exponent. Remember how we do that? We put it over 1, and then we flip Flip them upside down, and then you can make the, po the exponent positive. You don't have to solve these because it doesn't say evaluate, okay? Careful, I'm noticing people are still forgetting their parentheses. If they have parentheses on the number, you need to keep them. Here's a reminder of why. Negative 3 squared with parentheses would be 9, positive 9, right? Because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. But negative 3 squared without parentheses would be 3 squared negative, so negative 9. You see that parentheses matter, so don't forget to keep your parentheses if they have them. So notice this one's in parentheses, so we're going to put it over 1 in parentheses, okay? And then we're going to flip it. So careful, still keep it in the parentheses, but make the exponents then positive once you flip, okay? So don't forget those parentheses on 23 and 25 if there are any like that. Then let's go the opposite way. They want you to write these on number 27 using a negative exponent. So we're just going to flip it, right, and make the exponent negative. And then you can get rid of that negative or that 1, excuse me, on the bottom. That's okay to get rid of that. Now, if you have one like this, which you do, by the way, on 27 that doesn't have any exponent at all, you need to come up with a number that's squared or cubed to equal that number so that it does. 64, I can think of a number. I can think of 8 squared, right? That equals 64. And so if I want to make that exponent negative, I'm going to flip it upside down and change the exponent to negative. And so here's my final answer, right? So number 27, you'll have to do something similar to that. Okay, 29 was a little bit weird. It said write the wavelength of an x-ray as a fraction without an exponent and in words. So careful, you have two answers for number 29. Notice an x-ray's wavelength, it says on the chart, are 10 to the negative 10. So they want us to write it without an exponent and in words. In other words, as a fraction and with words. So first of all, we got to fix this. We can't work with a negative power. Remember how to fix it? Put it over 1 and then flip it, right? That makes the power positive. So we have 1 over 10 to the 10th power. 10 to the 10th power is 10 times 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 10 
times 10 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that, right? And remember, anytime you add something to, or multiply something times 10, it adds a zero, right? So if I start with 10 and I multiply it times 10, now it's 100, times another 10, now it's that, 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 and times another 10, whew, now it's that, right? So anytime you take something times 10, so notice what number this is. If I add my commas in there, here's what I get. That's 10 billion. So this becomes 1 over 10 billion, right? There we go. Okay, that's an, as an, that's just without an exponent, but now you need to write that in words. So that's 1 10 billionth, right, is how you'd write that in words. So there's your two answers that you'll need for number 29. And then for the last section today, they want you to evaluate. Remember, this fancy word means to solve. So do actually get a final answer. These ones gave us a little bit of trouble the other day. So I want you to take your time on these. I'm going to put all these numbers in in parentheses. M is 8, right? And then I'm going to put negative 2 in for A. Okay, here's our negative 4. So the first thing's first. You have to fix the negative powers before you can solve this. So I've got to fix this negative 2. So remember to fix this. I'm going to put it over 1 and then flip it, right? So this becomes 1 over negative 2 to the 4th power, right? I flipped it. So what is 1 over negative 2 to the 4th power? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, negative 2 times 2 is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. So this becomes 1 over 16. So I'm going to replace that right here because I, I figured out what that was. So I have 8 times 1 over 16, right? So if, in order to multiply this together, I'll have to put 8 over 1, right? I get 8 times 1 is 8, right? And then 1 times 16 is 16, which is the same thing as 1 half, okay? So be careful with those. When you do that last section, first solve the piece that has a negative power by flipping it over and making the power positive, solving that piece, and then multiplying it times the last number that was left, okay? So take your time on all those problems today. Contact me if you have any trouble or if you need some help or if you want me to look it over when you're done. Be happy to do that. Uh, hope, hope it goes well, guys. Have a good rest of your day.